Welcome back! Have you ever looked at a new camera release and noticed how one of the biggest headlines is about megapixels, like 45 megapixels for a camera or even 200 megapixels on a smartphone? It sounds impressive, right? Like the bigger the number, the better the photos. But here's the truth, megapixels are one of the most misunderstood specs in photography. So today, let's talk about it. We're going to talk about what megapixels actually are, why they matter and most importantly, why more isn't always better. By the end of this video you will exactly know how to think about megapixels megapixels the next time you're shopping for a camera. So let's start with the basics. What are megapixels really? Well, a megapixel simply means 1 million pixels. Pixels are tiny squares of information that makes up a digital photo. So when you hear a camera has 24 megapixels, it means the sensor is capturing 24 million little squares of information. And yes, that sounds huge, but here's the thing. A pixel itself doesn't mean much. Basically, it's just a point of data. What matters is how those pixels work together to form an image. Now, let's quickly talk about marketing. Camera and smartphone companies know that megapixels are an easy number to sell. And the selling point here is simple. A higher megapixel number equals a better camera. At least that's what they want you to believe. It's the same trick as horsepower in cars. A company can claim that this car has 500 horsepower, but does it truly indicate how well it handles, how comfortable it is, or how enjoyable it is to drive? Not really. And yes, the release of the Canon R1, for example, sparked a significant discussion about its 24 megapixel resolution. Many people were disappointed that it didn't offer a higher megapixel count. But more megapixel doesn't mean better. It always depends on the target group and again, what you want to do and need to get the job done. For example, the performance in all kind of situations might be more important instead of more megapixel. And yes, in photography, the obsession with megapixels has been around for decades now. And some time ago, smartphone companies also jumped on their train and they love to advertise crazy numbers like 100 megapixels or even 200 megapixels. But here's where things get interesting. If you remember one thing from this video, remember this. Sensor size matters far more than megapixel count. Think about it like this. Imagine you have a piece of paper the size of a postage stamp. Now try to squeeze 100 million dots of ink onto it. Those dots are going to be tiny, cramped together and they won't be able to hold much ink. Now take a large sheet of paper and put those same 100 million dots on it. Suddenly, each dot has more room to breathe, they can hold more ink, more detail and more nuance. A larger sensor means bigger individual pixels. Bigger pixels can capture more light and more light is super helpful to achieve a better image quality, especially in low light. This is why it's possible that a 12 megapixel full frame camera can outperform a 45 megapixel smartphone camera. It's not about the number of pixels, it's about the quality of each pixel. Next let's talk about low light and noise because this one is a little bit tricky. Especially when you shoot in low light your camera sensor can struggle to capture enough light. That's why a lot of people think that a photo of a high megapixel camera shows more noise when compared to a low megapixel camera because larger pixels can collect more light. But here you have to keep in mind that if you zoom in on a 45 megapixel photo your let's say 100% zoom factor in Lightroom zooms in more in comparison to a low megapixel photo. And in this case you obviously see see more noise on that 45 megapixel photo. So yes, if you take a look at both photos in full scale, you can't see a huge difference. But again, it totally depends on the situation. Especially in these days, the noise reduction in Lightroom, for example, is really good. That's why the noise topic shouldn't be the main reason to buy, let's say, a 24 or 45 megapixel full frame camera. Another topic that we need to talk about is file size. Let's say you're shooting raw photos. A 24 megapixel file might be around 25 megabyte. A 45 megapixel file could easily be 40, 50, or even 60 megabyte per image. So if you're shooting thousands of photos, that's going to eat up your memory cards, hard drives and backup systems incredibly fast. And let's not forget editing as well. Larger files put more strain on your computer. If you're working with high megapixel raw files in Lightroom, you better have a powerful computer or you'll be waiting forever for your images to load. So yes, more megapixels can also affect your entire workflow on set and in the post-production as well. At this point you might be wondering, well, what's the sweet spot? How many megapixels do I really need? And for most people, the answer is not as many as you think. If you're just posting to social media, even 12 megapixels can be more than enough. Instagram, for example, compresses your photos so much that nobody is seeing all the extra details anyway. If I show you a 24 megapixel photo of my Canon R1 and a 45 megapixel photo of my R5 here online, you will probably never notice the difference. Why? Well, I mean, take a look at this photo that I took with my 45 megapixel Canon R5. It's a good looking detail photo, right? Well, it's actually a photo that I took with my 24 megapixel R1 and the other one that I've shown you is a photo that I took with my Canon EOS R with 30 megapixel. To make it even clearer, here 
here you can see three photos, a 24 megapixel R1 photo, a 30 megapixel EOS R photo and a 45 megapixel R5 photo. Can you tell the difference? They are all fine for social media. In this case it just depends on which camera and lens setup makes it easier for you to capture the shot. If you're printing your photos, well that's where resolution matters more. I mean prints are a huge topic but let's put that in a simple perspective. Let's say you want to print a beautiful photo of your dog. In this case a 45 megapixel photo from my Canon R5 offers more room for bigger prints without losing details fast. However, here's something most people overlook. No one gets super close to check out these images. If you want to take a look at bigger prints like in a photo gallery or even here in my studio, you will likely take a step back to see the whole photo, which means you will see less fine details. This is also how people view huge billboards. The bigger the print, the farther away you stand. In most cases it's not necessary to get super close, except you want to check out a detail or macro shot where you actually want to see super highlighted details. High megapixel cameras like the Canon R5 with 45 megapixels are amazing tools. Don't get me wrong here, I totally love my R5, but they are also specialized tools. They are for people who need those details. For example, when I'm out there in the nature, I would always pick up my R5 to capture detail shots. But I've also taken some nature detail shots with my Canon R1 and never had any issues here. So especially for the average photographer, more megapixels are sometimes nice to have, but often overkill. Now I want to be fair here, high megapixels have a lot of benefits as well, and the biggest one is cropping power. If you shoot something that is far away, sometimes you can't get close enough to your subject. Having a high megapixel file means you can crop insignificantly and still have a usable image. And that's a real advantage, but it doesn't mean that you can't crop in if you just have a 24 megapixel camera. I really like to use my Canon R1 and yes I also crop my photos. So yes, there are a couple of scenarios where more megapixels give you more flexibility. But you have to ask yourself, how often do you really need to crop that heavily where you actually see a massive difference? If the answer is not that often, then a more balanced megapixel count is still good enough. And of course let's talk about smartphones for a moment, because this is where megapixel marketing is also super common. You've probably seen ads for phones with 100 or even 200 megapixels. Sounds incredible, right? But here's the catch. Those sensors are tiny compared to even the smallest dedicated camera sensors. Remember, it's not about how many pixels you have. On a smartphone sensor, each pixel is super small. So what the phone does is use pixel binning, combining multiple pixels into one super pixel to improve low light performance. And here's another twist. Smartphone lenses are also tiny. If your lens can't resolve enough detail, then having more megapixels doesn't actually give you more sharpness. It's like putting low quality lenses in front of a high resolution sensor. It just doesn't add up. So yeah, even if you use a 45 megapixel Canon R5 or any other camera brand with a high megapixel camera and you only pair it with low quality glass that can't deliver enough sharpness, it is possible that you never actually use the advantages of these high megapixel cameras. So having the right lenses is still one of the most important factors here. A cheap lens in combination with a high megapixel camera can lead to low quality results, while a mid-range camera and a high quality lens can lead to better results. So you always have to spend more money on good lenses as well, otherwise your image quality won't be as good as it could be. So if megapixels aren't the full story, what does make a photo truly great? First, the sensor size is super important. Second, the lens quality. A sharp, high quality lens can make a bigger difference than jumping from 24 to 45 megapixels. Third, the dynamic range. This is your camera's ability to capture detail in both bright highlights and dark shadows. And finally, you, the photographer. Composition, lighting, timing and creativity matter far more than pixel counts. Let's take a moment to reflect on the downsides of chasing megapixels just for the sake of it. First, it creates unrealistic expectations. People think high megapixel cameras will instantly make them better photographers. Spoiler alert, it won't. Second, it dries up costs. High megapixel sensors are expensive to make, and the camera that houses them often requires more advanced processors, faster memory cards and storage solutions. That cost trickles down to you, the consumer. And third, it can actually make your life harder. Remember the file size issue. Shooting with a 60 megapixel camera means you will be drowning in data before you know it. So unless you truly need the resolution, you may be paying more for headaches than benefits. So let's bring it all together. How should you think about megapixels when buying a camera? Here's a simple breakdown. 12 to 20 megapixels, these are great for video, low light, basic social media and general photography. Perfect if you value speed and file efficiency. 24 to 30 megapixels, 
the sweet spot for most photographers. Excellent detail, manageable file sizes and plenty of resolution for prints. 40 or more megapixels, ideal for photographers who need maximum detail, heavy cropping flexibility and photographers who truly need extreme resolution for specific very large prints. For everyone else, you're better off focusing especially on lenses, lighting and composition. So here's the truth, more megapixels are not automatically better. They can be useful in certain scenarios like cropping or printing very large images. But for most photographers, they are not super necessary. What really matters is sensor size, lens quality, dynamic range and most importantly, your creative vision. A great photo is not defined by the number on a spec sheet, it's defined by the story it tells, the emotion it captures and the way it connects with people. So the next time you see a camera or smartphone with low or high megapixels, don't fall for the marketing hype. Focus on what really matters, learning your craft, developing your creative vision and using the tools you have to their fullest potential. Because at the end of the day, photography isn't about megapixels, it's about capturing moments. But what's your favorite camera? Let me know that in the comments. So, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're new, don't forget to smash that subscribe button to stay updated for upcoming videos and I'll see you in the next video.